Hi everybody, this is Emily from the NetZoom team, here to show you how to use smart builds in NetZoom. As you may already know, one of NetZoom's most powerful features is its device library, a collection of over 500,000 device shapes from 5,500 manufacturers. Users of NetZoom can use these true-to-life device shapes to represent the devices added to your data center. That being said, NetZoom understands that oftentimes enterprises will utilize an identical or similar configuration of the same rack multiple times throughout their data center. To facilitate this, NetZoom has developed the concept of smart builds. The Smart Builds feature allows users to create custom rack configurations and add them to a model store. Once these models have been created, they can be added to the inventory or data center as many times as needed. This way, if you have many instances of the same or a similar rack, you only need to model them once, saving you time and getting your data center up and running. In this video, we're going to go over how to create a smart build by adding devices from the device library or your configured or basic models, how to add connectivity to your smart build, as well as adding your smart build to your inventory or data center. First, let's log into NetZoom. Enter your NetZoom application server URL in the web browser. Then enter your username and password. Let's navigate to the smart builds feature. This can be found under the Inventory menu and the Smart Builds tab. As you can see, the Smart Builds feature lists Smart Builds in the Explorer pane, organized by different model stores. In the Details pane, we can see the properties of a selected Smart Build, as well as a preview, 2D and 3D, of our build. We can use the Device Library Quick action to search the Device Library for racks to add to our Smart Builds. We can also add Smart Builds from an Excel spreadsheet via import. Now it's time to search our device library for the rack that we want to use. When we search the device library in the Smart Builds feature, results will be limited to racks or chassis. Refer to our device library video for more information on searching the device library. For now, we're going to look for the Chatsworth manufacturer and select a rack from there. As you can see, the results pane lists the results of our search. In this case, we have a list of Chadsworth products that have been added to the device library. You'll notice that most of the models we have here are blank racks. These are going to be the basis of any smart build. Occasionally, racks will come pre-configured with devices, just as we saw in the configured models video. But in this case, we're going to stick with a blank rack like this one. Notice when we select a rack, we can see the properties of the selected rack as well as a front, rear, and top preview. Now that we've found our rack, we can add it to a configured model store. Click and drag the rack to the store you want to add it to. As you can see, the Add Model form will pop up. You can create a new model store by entering a new group name here. Enter a name for your model and a description if you like, and click the Save button. The model will be saved and will be added to the selected inventory store. Great, our rack has been added. And if we select the properties pane, we can see the properties of our selected rack. Now that we've got our blank rack added to our smart builds, it's time to configure it. Smart builds can be filled using configured models and basic models that fit into its specifications. Since most rack mountable devices adhere to the typical standards of a rack, we can add almost any rack mountable device into these slots, which you can see here. For now, we'll select the Configured Models Quick Action. This will allow us to search our configured models, basic models, and other smart builds for device models to add to our rack. You'll notice that this search is very similar to the device library search. We'll look through our configured model store to find a power supply for this rack. This looks like a good power supply, so we can add it to our rack. Now, you'll notice that we have not only the front RUs, but also the rear RUs for this rack, as well as this device. NetZoom allows you to install your devices in your racks any way you choose, but for now, we'll keep things simple and install the device to the front of the rack with the front of the device facing outward. Navigate to the RU you want to install it in and click and drag the view. We'll start with RU1 in this case. Be aware, your smart build must be unapproved to add devices to it. Notice that the Add Device pane has popped up. Here we can see the options to mount on both sides and mount as a zero RU device. Mounting on both sides is simple. If selected, this device will be considered as mounted on both the front or and rear of the, of the rack. 
In this case, the front of our device will be mounted in the front side and the rear in the rear side. Uncheck this if you plan to install multiple devices on the same RU. For example, installing one device in the front of the rack and one in the rear. As for zero RU mounting, NetZoom understands that occasionally devices will be installed in a rack in a non-traditional configuration. For example, you may attach a security camera to the side of your rack. For these purposes, NetZoom allows you to mount a device as a zero RU device, not taking up the slot. We'll go over how to mount zero RU devices in another video. Once you've added a name in the description, click the Save button, and your device will be installed in the rack. And now, as you can see, the front of our device has been installed in the front view of our rack, and vice versa. If we select our rack again, we'll notice that our preview has changed even to include the new device. Well, our new device has been installed in our rack and is looking great, but let's add a few more devices to this rack. As you can see, we've added a few more devices onto this rack. Three blade servers, another power supply, some additional power supplies going up the side of the rack, as well as a patch panel and two switches. Remember, all of this was as easy as searching for these devices in the device library or in your configured model store, dragging them over to the rack unit I wanted to add them in. In fact, these blade enclosures are actually smart builds themselves. You can see them right here. I searched the smart build store and added them to my existing smart build. Finally, you can configure your racks with connectivity using these features as well. Select the power or data connectivity features and then select the rack you want to add connectivity to. As you can see, this looks a lot like our connectivity wizard. Well, that's because it's used the exact same way. Navigate to the devices in the rack you want to add connectivity to and right click and add them to the left or right pane. In this case, we'll take this blade server as well as this UPS. As you can see, a list of power or data ports on these devices will appear. You can select the ports you want to connect and click the connect button. A list of cables will pop up displaying cables from basic models. Select the cable model you want to use and click the select button. You can also choose whether you want this cabling to be done through the floor or through the ceiling. Once you make the connection, the two ports will be considered connected via cable. We even see that these ports are colored in yellow to determine that they are connected. If this smart build was added to our inventory or our data center, this connection between the two devices within the smart build would come along with it. This means if your typical device configuration also comes with typical connectivity, you only need to map your connectivity once. Every time you add that, this instance of your smart build to your data center or inventory, the connectivity will come along with it, including the cables. You can do all sorts of things with smart builds, from changing certain properties on the build to setting up contracts or provisioned power. When you're finished, be sure to right click on your smart build and click approve. This will allow your smart build to be used in the inventory or in your data center. Now that our smart build is approved, we'll be able to add this particular model configuration to our inventory or data center as many times as we like, and we only had to configure it once. If we navigate to the inventory menu and click new devices, we can select the models quick action to display a search for our model stores. If we search smart builds, we will of course notice that the smart build we just created appears. And if we drag the smart builds to one of our inventory stores, we can add this device to our inventory. Once we approve this device in our inventory, the rack itself, as well as all the devices installed on it, will be assigned asset IDs and will begin to be tracked as inventory. That covers the basics of smart builds in Netsium. But remember, smart builds are a powerful tool, and we've only scratched the surface of what they can do. Be sure to check out our other videos for more information on how to use the NetZoom product. And if you want to try out NetZoom for your own data center, visit NetZoom.com to schedule a free demo.